Welcome to Panels and Borders. I'm Dominic. So I decided to do uh, a driving video. I've seen a few people, these are kind of popular on YouTube. And it's uh, kind of a neat idea because you can kill two birds with one stone. You can make a video and you can drive somewhere. So it's a good, uh, it's a good use of time while you're sitting in the car. So I tried this out on Saturday actually. This is a uh, second take. I did this video on Saturday, similar video, and then rewatched. I was going to upload it, but I rewatched it, and uh, in the video I got distracted a lot, and the road was really bumpy because I was driving in an area I wasn't quite familiar with. So I didn't like the way the video turned out, so that one I decided not to upload it, and uh, I'm going to do this one instead. So uh, the thing, I, so th these videos, they're not going to be scripted or anything. It's just going to be me talking into the camera, just about you know things that are going on, pop culture and. Uh, what's on my mind and stuff like that so it's going to be pretty casual non-scripted kind of thing so what I was going to talk about is I read an article by the BBC about the matrix and uh, basically the article was criticizing the matrix but why it's uh, how it hasn't aged very good and it's uh, getting dated because it's problematic and then the author is you know white male feminist of course so he's talking about how the uh, matrix by today's standards is problematic and he criticizes the character of Neil, Neil or Neil and uh, he talks about how uh, Neil isn't a good hero because he you know he doesn't train he just gets all the powers he got just like implanted in him through a computer program and how why why did, why should he be a savior because you know, he's just a, a hacker who broke a bunch of computer laws and he wasn't an equal warrior and he wasn't a political activist so in his mind if you're none of those things then he can't be a hero I guess and uh, so anyway he went on to go on a, and then he went on to say how you know how, the, how racist the white savior trope was because this is somehow the white savior trope but then he had to correct himself remove that from the article because he realized that uh, Keanu Reeves isn't fully white. Keanu Reeves is mixed race. So it changed his argument. So I thought that was interesting and uh, it just goes to show how you know how that the whole ideology is in my opinion really bad because now depending on the race the race of the character or the actor like it alters the way he criticizes the movie. So, shouldn't you be criticizing the movie just solely on the how good, good or bad a character is? And why would his race affect that criticism? I thought that was interesting. Uh, but I've seen a few articles come out like this. There was another one I saw popped up on Twitter and I read it. It was all about the Heathers, the movie Heathers from the 1980s. Now, I haven't actually seen Heathers, um, but uh, the article went on to talk about how problematic it was and by today and insensitive to this, that, and the other thing, and basically judging it on today's standards. And uh, so there's always a lot of these articles that come out and they kind of dump on past movies because of themes or things in them that today the, uh, the, the trend of over the top political correctness thinks it's problematic. Like the general population is fine with it, like normal, rational, common sense people they're fine with it but you know uh, the, the crazy SJWs for lack of a better term or as I like to call them cultural authoritarians they always seem to have a problem with this kind of stuff and uh, now I, I mean on the face of it I mean this guy he, of course he has every right to speak out and criticize the matrix but I think it's uh, fair that we should be able to criticize his article and push back against his criticisms if depending on how valid or invalid we feel they are and I don't really think it's a wise decision to not let these types of articles go unchallenged and I'm gonna explain why a few years ago uh, the author Laura Ingalls Wilder her name was stripped from a prestigious children's award. 
for children's books. So the reason being because her books are based in a time that she grew up in, which was during like the frontier days of the United States and the Wild West, all that kind of time period. And so she wrote about how her life was during those during that time. So there's obviously by today's standards, there's a lot of terms and things and the, the way she writes about Native Americans and uh, indigenous people that people find offensive by today's standards. So because of those things that she said or read, wrote about in her book, by today's standards, they, they, they're too offensive, too problematic. So her name was stripped from this award. So now th this is the danger of this line of thinking and why I think if people can push back against it, you should while you still can. I don't know how much longer you'll be able to do that because of censorship and all that kind of stuff. But the reason being is because of things like that. So how long is it going to be? Now, obviously, I might be speaking hyperbolically here, but what if the Matrix, what if Warner Brothers decides at some point in the future that the Matrix is too problematic? Or Star Wars has now become too problematic, and so they just remove them permanently from their film catalogs, and so no one can ever see those films again future generations. You know, I've seen a lot of older books getting criticized the same way Little House on the, the Little House on the Prairie's books were criticized. You know, I, I recently did a video about a current science fiction author criticizing uh, Frank Herbert's Dune. And he was criticizing it through that political correct lens. Like, oh, well, this is problematic and, and this is that and this is that. You know, for, you know, not really basing it on whether or not the story is good or bad, but how politically incorrect it is. That's how they seem to judge all the art. It's not, is this a good story or is this not a good story? But how how problematic is this story? How What, what problems can we find with the story that, what, what, what can we find offensive about this? And so how long is it going to be before, you know, certain works of art are too problematic and then we don't have access to them anymore? So you have people deciding on your behalf what you can and cannot read. And I, I find it just blows my mind that authors, current, current authors of today, wouldn't speak out against something like that. Because how long is it going to be before Frank Herbert's Dune is too problematic and all the awards that book won and they, they strip, start stripping his name off of things? Or, or Neil Gaiman, same thing. How long is it before his writings are, you know, not politically correct? And, you know, for some, like in the future, his books will be considered like too problematic for whatever future tr political trend is popular then. And then they start, start stripping his name off of awards and start, uh, you know, taking away, retroactively taking away his awards. And then they start banning his books or altering his books. You know, it's, I don't know what these people, how, why these people think that this is going to do anything. This isn't making society any better. This is not change, this is not going to change anything. This is not going to make, make any, let the world any less offensive or any less racist. It's not going to do anything. It's, it's just, it's just authoritarianism. That's it. It's just, they want, you know, they just want to control what you can read and can't read. Because someone might read some of these old books and question their ideology or question something. So it's kind of scary. And this has already been happening. This has already has happened. DC has decided on two occasions certain comics they had from the past are considered too offensive and too problematic now. They've decided not to uh, publish them anymore. Uh, one was the first several issues of Detective Comics that that don't feature Batman, because Batman first appeared in Detective Comics, I believe it was issue 27. So all the issues before that were just, uh, you know, run-of-the-mill detective stories. And uh, DC Comics were going to release that in a reprint, and uh, activists or these cultural authoritarians decided that, no, we can't have this, this is too offensive by today's standards. And then DC buckled and decided, no, okay, we're not going to release this. We're not. So how how many stories are going to start disappearing from the past? 
we're going to effectively be erasing our own history. So it's, uh, you know, it's a really, to me, it's a really terrible thing. And I don't know where it's going to end or, you know, will, I, will society, you know, get have more common sense and come to its senses at some point and start standing up to these types of crybabies. But uh, that's everything I got to say in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and I will see you at the next one. Thank you to all of my subscribers, and thank you for watching this video. And if you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to hit the bell icon for notification when new videos are uploaded.